Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Citygate Church Online this Sunday morning. We are so glad that you could be joining us, particularly if you are new or a guest to our online service. We want to say a huge, special, warm welcome to you. You've come to the right place. We're going to have a lot of fun this morning for today's online service. I'm joined by Eleanor. Uh, many of you would have seen Eleanor on our online service for kids, which happens every week just before our main service. Eleanor, great to have you with us. Hey church, I'm so excited to be here today. Today's service is gonna be awesome. And as always, there's so many ways to engage. Talk to yes. us in, in the chat, uh, comment, tell us uh, what you ate for breakfast today. How's, <laughs> yeah. how's your morning going? And also share this video, share it with someone. You never know who might need it. Yeah, definitely. Loads of ways to engage. And our Connect team is there uh, waiting for you in the chat. So get involved. Also, if you are new to church today and you want to find out some more, maybe you want to speak to someone face to face, ask some questions, then you can join our Connect Lounge Live. That's happening at the end of today's service. Where's that happening, Eleanor? On Zoom. It's happening on Zoom. So the link's going to be in the chat. It's also in the video description. You can hit that link at about 11 o'clock we're going live with our um, connect lounge live but also we've got something very special happening on zoom at the same time oh yeah for all you parents and young people you can meet the youth team today i know we've got some uh graduates coming up into secondary school coming up into year seven joining city gate youth so you can join our youth team today after the service bit more information about that later but we're going to go into our praise and worship right now and eleanor would you pray for us as we yeah together of course of course Heavenly Father, I pray as we come into your presence, as we come to worship you, I pray that you help us to fix our eyes on you. I pray that regardless of what we're going through in our lives right now, that you help us to just put that all aside and to just focus on you, Lord, as we worship you, as we glorify your name. Your name is above all names, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
church we're going to pray right now lord god we thank you father that you are a good god that you are a god who hears our prayers who hears our hearts who know the things that we go through lord god lord and we thank you lord jesus that as we pray today as we stand in agreement on your word as we exercise our faith today that you will move in powerful ways in every situation god we lift up every prayer request represented in our church every situation where there needs to be a breakthrough lord god we speak breakthrough to those situations we declare that mountains will be moved in Jesus name we declare that there will be an abundance for every good work in the name of Jesus those people believing for job opportunities breakthroughs in finance Lord God for relationships to be healed and restored and made whole Father God we thank you for your spirit at work in these situations Lord and right now as we as we put our faith on those things Lord God we thank you Lord that nothing is impossible for those who believe and today we want to give you praise and honor Lord God for for the things that you are doing behind the scenes already we thank you Lord God for your your provision we thank you Lord God for your healing power we thank you for your anointing and your spirit being poured out today Lord God and we thank you Father that you are a good God that your hand is towards us that your favor is upon your church Lord God and we thank you Father for the, the everything that we put our hand to will prosper in these days in Jesus name amen amen, amen. Good morning, Citygate Church. We have a piano in our house, but currently there is only one member of our family that can play. And I wish that was me, but it is not. It is my husband, Tom. He's been playing since he was five, um, classically tra tra trained and um, very good. And Ezra, he's still learning to play and he watches his dad play with complete adoration. He loves it. And when Tom's finished, Ezra will jump up and he'll bash about on the keys. And he almost is a bit confused that he is not able to produce that same sound that he just watched Tom do. And he has said before, you know, why, why won't my hands do that? Why aren't my hands doing what daddy did? And he compares himself to his dad and will then kind of dismiss anything that he's able to achieve because he thinks it, you know, it doesn't sound as good. And oftentimes we can start to compare ourselves to other people in terms of finances or giving. And when we're doing that, when we're comparing ourselves to them, we're often looking at an end result and forgetting about the fact that there was a middle step that came before that. Now Ezra, when he looks at his dad, he sees where he is now that he can play, play these really complicated, fantastic pieces. And Ezra's still playing yeah, my old man's a dustman or old MacDonald had a farm or whatever. And for a five-year-old, that's fantastic. You know, what he's able to play is great for him and he has already learned skills, but it's gonna take time to build on that little that he has now to get to where he wants to be. And, you know, it's the same for us with our finances. God has already given us seed. He's already given us something in our hand. It might not be as much as we you know, we want, and actually it's not as much as God wants for us either. He has a plan and a purpose for our finances and he wants us to reach that potential. But the reality is, if we never sow what God has already given us, then we're never gonna reach our full potential in our finances. If Ezra never builds, if he never realizes what he's already got in his hand and he never builds on those skills and puts in the time to practice, he will never get to where he sees his dad. And God wants us to reach our full potential in our finances. So today, as we give our tithes and offerings, don't despise what we have in our, in our hand. You know, I'm reminded of the widow's mites when she gave that small amount and everybody looked and said, and, and mocked her almost to say what a small amount that she had given. But Jesus was looking at her heart. 
he was looking at, the attitude that it came with, and that was everything that she had. And if you feel this morning that what you have is only small, but it's everything that you have, it's in that you're giving with the right attitude and the right heart, then God will bless that seed and he will multiply it. And you will be able to look back um, in the future to where you are now and see how much uh, your seed has grown, how much your finances have grown. When you when you sow that seed, when you trust in God and know that you're giving it with the right heart, that God will bless it and multiply it. Let's pray church. Father, I thank you. I thank you that you have got great plans for our finances. You have got great plans for our seed. And I pray, Father, that as we sow today, Father, that we know that we are sowing into good ground, that we know, Father, that we are giving to the true and living God and that you would bless and multiply our seed. We thank you, God, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This morning, church, there are two ways to give, as you can see on your screens. If you're a guest, there's no obligation to give at all. This is family business. Yeah, definitely. And as well, Eleanor, we're in a different setting today than where we've been the last few weeks. It's looking a little bit like church. Yeah, It's looking it a bit is. like church. Everyone, we're back in our auditorium uh, and we're making preparations. The reason we're here is that actually we are making preparations for Sunday services and some other meetings starting to get back to, uh, to meeting up mm. and meeting in person, which is super exciting. We are so thrilled about this. Yeah. It's good to be here, actually. It's so good to be here. I've missed it so much. We definitely have. And we want to hear from you. Uh, if you consider yourself part of CityGate Church, then hopefully you would have received an email through our database uh, to answer a few short questions. There's lots of ways that you can do it. Maybe you heard about it from your small group leaders as well uh, into what it looks like for coming back to church and how we're starting to phase that in over the next few weeks and months. Eleanor, how can people do that questionnaire? There's a link on the screen right now. It's also on the church website and it's really quick and easy. Just five questions. We want to hear from you. So yeah. let us know. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you've not yet done that, then take a moment and head over to the website and do that. And as well, uh, as we're preparing for Sunday services and those other meetings coming back into the building and seeing people again, we want to let you know as well that our online service is staying right here. We're not going anywhere. So whether you can get here or can't get here, you can still join us for church every week without fail absolutely citygate kids is staying online for the time being and we are super excited about that every week in your living room but also we're starting to get back to some meetings here that we can gather as a church in person so so exciting but there's something else happening after today's service eleanor yep today is meet the youth team yes. this is for our parents and are young people who have moved from year six to year seven, you know, just to meet the youth team and to get to hear their heart. Our youth team is amazing and it will be amazing for you to meet them. Yeah, definitely. You can join that at the end of the service. There's going to be a Zoom link in the chat and really hear the vision yeah. and the heartbeat of CityGate Youth, meet our youth leaders. So if that's right, like Eleanor said, if you're a parent or a young person, not just a year seven's coming up, we want to open this up to every young person. Maybe you're in year nine or year 10 or year 11 and you're, you're new to church. We want to invite you to come and meet the youth team as we head into the next term for CityGate Youth. It's going to be super, super exciting. As Absolutely. well as that, we want to remind you that tonight is our monthly all church prayer meeting. It happens on Insta Live, 8 p.m. tonight. It's actually going to be happening here in the building, which is super exciting. But you can join us on Instagram Live and you can be praying in your homes, joining us for that. It's going to be a phenomenal night. And as well, Pastor Jay is going to be making some important announcements about what it looks like for church coming back to some meetings. So if you can join us for that, that would be fantastic. Uh, but right now we're going to go into a new preach, brand new preach from our senior pastor, Pastor Julian. I'm excited for this, Eleanor. Oh, so am I. It's going to be great. So why don't you uh, lean in? Why don't you get your Bible apps out? Why don't you get your notebooks ready and really engage in today's message with Pastor Julian? Well, good morning, CityGate Church and all of our online guests. I trust you had a great summer and here we are heading into September. And I believe God wants to speak to us over the next few weeks about something that he's put on my heart and, I, and I'm going to do everything I can to inject it, as it were, into the life of CityGate Church. I believe God wants us to be laying hold of a spirit of boldness at this time. With all the stuff going on around us and, you know, 
all the challenges that we face, it's important that we see uh, Jesus Christ for who he is. He's explained and described to be so many things in the Bible. Of course, he's the lamb who was uh, slain for the sins of the world. We see him as a good shepherd. We see him as so many things in the Bible. But today, I want us to have an understanding that he's declared to be the lion of the tribe of Judah. Even those, you know, just few words stir me up on the inside. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is declared to be a lion in the Bible. Now, I don't think about a tame lion when we think about lion. I don't think about some angry lion, but I do think about the king of the jungle. I do think about an animal which is absolutely full of confidence and full of security, is not intimidated and knows who he is. And today, I want us to ask ourselves the question, how do we see Jesus? As we think of him during this year, I want to declare it out loud and clearly. When I see Jesus, I see him high and exalted. I see him crowned with many crowns. I see him as our healer, as our provider. I see him as the one who speaks life into every situation. I see him as the one with all authority and all power. I see him as the one with all the love which casts out all fear. I see him as the life as of that that has authority over death. I see him as the one with joy and the one with peace and the one with understanding. I see him as the one with all security and with all power. I see him as a lion today, as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And as we think about these things today, um, it's important that we keep everything in you know, perspective. With everything that's going on, there is still a lion on the throne. Something that's great in the Bible is that there are all sorts of people who had a heart for God. And a great example is King David. There was a time he gathered an army and it speaks of some of those people from the army. It said they had faces like the faces of lions. I want to ask you today, have you got a lion-like character? Have you got something on the inside of you which is not easily intimidated? Have you got something on the inside of you which is stirred up and which is bold and that is is a confident spirit on the inside because that is the lion of the tribe of Judah in your heart. If you've made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, then the lion of the tribe of Judah lives on the inside. It says in Proverbs chapter 28 and in verse 1, it says, evil people, they flee when there isn't anyone uh, chasing them, but those who know God are as bold as a lion. Those who know God, those who have a relationship with God are as bold as a lion. Friend, I want to encourage you today, no matter how you feel, you are as bold as a lion. There's confidence on the inside of you. There's faith on the inside of you. There's something so strong that it can't be put down. It can't be held down. The Bible says, when I fall, I shall arise. Why? Because the righteous are as bold as a lion. That's worth a shout of amen. Amen, right there. As we think about the line of Judah, it speaks of uh, Judah there, and that was a tribe of Israel, and it was the tribe of praise. You, you know, so often in the Bible, we have an example that praise brings the victory, and in, actually in the coming Sundays, I'm going to be speaking just a little bit about that. But praise always brings the victory. No wonder he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Why? Because there's praise that belongs to our God, which gives you confidence on the inside. And you know what? As we spend time in praise, as we spend time giving glory to God, it stirs up a spirit of boldness on the inside. I want to encourage you, friend, no matter what is going on around your life, spend time exalting the name of Jesus Christ, the name which is above every name. At that name, every knee is going to bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, as we praise that name, as we exalt that name, as we shout that name, as we dance, whether it's here in church, hopefully in a few weeks time or, uh, you know, at home in the lounge, as we praise the name of Jesus Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah starts to roar on the inside of your heart. So I've just got a few things to say today about the spirit of boldness and how God wants us to function from a spirit of boldness. The first thing that I want to bring to 
today is this. We have a boldness because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It says in Hebrews chapter 10 in, and in verse 19, it says, Therefore, brothers, having a a boldness to enter the holiest into the presence of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, at the very heart of having a bold life is having access into the throne of God. You see, I'm not just talking about a personality of confidence, somebody who's an extrovert or somebody who's brash. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about a spirit that has a boldness in there and it's because we come into the throne room of God. The Bible says right there in his throne room is the throne of grace and we come with a boldness. We come with a confidence. So often I was taught before that you have to come into God's presence with your head down and with a hard sort of... I don't know, almost a repentance going on every time you come into God's presence. But I found out that I have a heavenly father who loves me and whose arms are open to me and I can come at any time with a confidence and a boldness. The Bible says that we have a boldness to come into God's presence. And as we come in with that boldness, it's because the blood of Jesus has been shed. Friend, I will always preach about the blood of Jesus Christ. Why? Because the blood of Jesus is central to who I am in God and who God is in me. It's the blood that has cleansed my life. It's the blood that has opened a way where there was no way. It's the blood that has forgiven my sins. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that has healed my body. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that has given me and given you, my friend, all these great and precious promises that I can partake of God's divine nature. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that is still speaking on, on our behalf in the presence of God. It's the blood of Jesus Christ which can never ever lose its power. Today my friend I want to ask a question that sounds a bit strange but it's a it's a scriptural you know, sort of question. Have you been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ? Have you received Jesus Christ as Lord and allowed his sacrifice to set you free from your sin, to set you free from sin habits in your life, to set you free from perhaps things going on in your mind which are best not there? You know what? The blood of Jesus has still got power today to set captives free, to open prison doors, to heal the sick and to provide for needs. No wonder we can come right into God's throne room with a confidence and with a boldness. Why? Because the blood of Jesus Christ has been shed for the sin and the death of the world. Thank you God. Why don't you just spend just a little bit of time now just thanking God for the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Father we thank you that you so loved this world that you sent your only begotten son Jesus. You shed your blood on the cross and Father that blood still speaks for us today and today Father God we receive the blood covenant we have we receive the effect and the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and Father we thank you today that we can come in with a confidence and with a boldness because that blood has been shed for us amen amen number two wow that that really stirred me number two it's important that we pray bold prayers that we pray bold prayers. There was a man in the Old Testament, I spoke on him just the other week, a man called um, uh, Jabez. Even though he had had a life of oppression and people putting him down, he prayed big, bold, hairy prayers. I mean, he really did. He stirred it up and he said, Father, I want increase. I want there to be something so powerful happen in my life that you're glorified in my life, that you would bless me indeed. I love that heart of Jabez. I love that spirit. I love that confidence and the boldness that there was on the inside. And I want to encourage you today. History is full of people who broke through because they prayed big, bold prayers. Let's not pray average prayers, something that we really don't even need God to move. Let's not pray prayers of endurance and, oh, I'm just going to cope with this and put up with that and, oh God, if it be thy will and Father God, while you're doing something else, please don't forget me. Come on, let's get back to God's word and pray big, bold 
prayers. Let's pray prayers that it's going to take a supernatural intervention of Almighty God to bring that to pass. Let's pray prayers of national revival. Let's pray prayers for God to heal the sick. Let's pray prayers for God to turn this nation around at this time. Let's pray prayers for the devil to take his hands off of God's property. Let's pray prayers for God to turn the economy of this nation around and for God to be Jehovah Jireh in each one of our personal circumstances. Let's pray big and bold prayers which it's going to take almighty God to show himself strong for that prayer to come to pass. You know what? I love the Bible. There's all sorts of great prayers in the Bible. People pray prayers that it just absolutely inspire me absolutely stir me up. You can go through history in the Bible and find people praying for God to do signs and wonders, for God to show himself strong, for God to pour out his spirit in a generation. And I want to inspire us today, City Gate Church, for us to pray big, bold prayers for God to pour his spirit out in our nation. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. Let's pray the word of God. Let's pray and fast and see God move in our generation. The Bible says this is the confidence, can I say the boldness that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, we know he hears us and if we know that he hears us, we know, we have a confidence and we have a boldness that we have the petitions that we ask of him. Friend, pray big, bold prayers. The third thing that I want us to understand today is this. God wants us to step out in a spirit of boldness. It says in the 14th chapter of Matthew where it, it speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ out on the Sea of Galilee. And there's Peter. Now we all know Peter from the Bible. He's sort of, uh, you know, he's the one who says things before he thinks. He's the one who sort of is excitable and he's the one who's passionate and gets stirred up. And he sees the Lord Jesus Christ out there on the sea and he says, Lord, if that's you, then tell me to come. That's a pretty bold thing to say. Lord, if that's you, then tell me to come. And of course, it was him. So he had to say, well, come. And there was something so stirred up in Peter that he jumped out of the boat and he began to walk on the water. Now we know he saw the wind and the waves and he began to sink and, and all the rest of it. But I don't know about you, that man inspires me. He stepped out with a spirit of boldness because he saw something that was possible. He stepped out with a spirit of boldness because he saw something that he'd never experienced before, but he believed he could lay hands on, he could lay hold of. I want to encourage you today, friend. As Jesus said, do not be afraid. He said it so many times, don't be afraid, but only believe. I want to encourage you today to not allow fear to get into your mind, to get into your emotions, to get into your will. There's so much fear and anger all over the world today, but we are not of those of anger and fear. We have a spirit of faith. We have the oil of joy. We have compassion on the inside. And I believe God wants us to be stirred up at this time and to jump out of our boat. When God says, come, when we hear that voice of the Holy Spirit on the inside. I want to I encourage you today to step out in a spirit of boldness. I love the fact that Peter was strong enough and he was bold enough to have a go. As I look back over my life, I, I want to see things that I was strong enough to have a go. Now, my strength is not in myself. It's in Almighty God. But that's where the spirit of boldness kicks in. I want to be stepping out of boats. I want to be seeing things that I've never seen before. I want to be having a go at things that I've not had a go at. And I know, you know, as you grow older, certain things. I used to love to rock climb an abseil. And now you're not going to get me hanging off a rope down a, a, a cliff. It's not going to happen. So I'm not just talking about doing things for a bit of adventure. I'm talking about things in God. I'm talking about the fact that you can believe God and put your hand to something and see God break through. Let's not be of those who just sit back and see, well, perhaps God will do something. No, I want to be somebody who steps out of boats. I want to be somebody who puts my hands to things that have not been done before. I want to be somebody who, through the word of God on the inside of Citygate Church, that we haven't been this way before, but we say, come on, let's step out. If God says it, I believe it. That settles 
enables it. Let's step out in a boldness. Perhaps at this time, you know, perhaps God's speaking to you about a stepping out into a new business or into a new job. Perhaps he's talking to you about stepping out into the unknown, as it were. Perhaps you've never been this way before. I know we've all experienced things this year that we've never experienced before. All sorts of challenges, all sorts of new opportunities. But I believe God wants us to step out. I believe he wants us to be bold on the inside because the lion of the tribe of Judah is not intimidated by his surroundings. And friend, I want to encourage you, if God has spoken into your life, if you've had it confirmed from God's word and you know it's there on the inside of you, you can't shake it off, God has spoken to you. Friend, I want to encourage you to rise up and step out in a spirit of boldness. As we close today, the final thing in this spirit of boldness as we start to think about these things over the next few weeks, there's a great passage of scripture in Acts chapter 4. And this fourth thing that I want to say today is to be bold enough to tell your story. To be bold enough to tell your story. In Acts chapter 4, there's this incredible time of uh, prayer happening. See, there's a persecution going on. They've just seen somebody healed and they start to be persecuted because they're starting to teach and preach in the name of Jesus Christ. And so the disciples all gather together as they did and they were praying and they were saying, really, this is a paraphrase. They're saying, Father, there's so much persecution going on. There are things happening. And they prayed this. It says, now, Lord, you can hear their threats. Grant to your servants that with a spirit of boldness, with all boldness, they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus Christ. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and the place was filled and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Did you hear that? They spoke the word of God with boldness. You know, so often I, I say very bold things when I'm on my own and I'm praying with God. Perhaps I'm not so bold when I'm in front of people. But something happened to this group of people here. They were praying and they prayed for a spirit of boldness. They prayed that, they prayed that God would do something so powerful that they would never be the same again. This was not a change of personality. This wasn't some, you know, confidence boost. The Bible says they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Friend, as we are filled with the Holy Spirit, something so powerful happens on the inside. Of course, God speaks to us and God hones us and God um, helps us and he strengthens us and he purifies us. He does all sorts of things on the inside of us when we're filled with his Spirit. But something that happens when we are filled with his Spirit is that the lion of the tribe of Judah starts to roar again on the inside. Friend, I don't know how you feel. I don't know how your experience has gone this year. I don't know if you feel like you're on your last legs or you haven't got any more to give or you feel exhausted and you just can't go another step. Friend, there is an answer and it is the filling of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says for us to be being filled with the Holy Spirit. And today I want us to pray as a church that Citygate Church and all of us individually, in fact, the church across the world is filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about fresh oil. The Bible talks about the fire of God falling. The Bible talks in so many examples, so many ways about the Holy Spirit coming in. And it's my prayer today that whoever you are and however your experience has been over these last few months that we are all filled again with the person of the Holy Spirit and as a as an outcome I believe there will be a fresh spirit of boldness in the church of Jesus Christ it says they went out and they spoke the word of God with boldness God loves prayers for boldness God loves it when his people say father 
Will you give me boldness? Will you do something on the inside of me that I'm not intimidated, that I don't shrink back? The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 10, we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but we are those who through the spirit of faith, we press on to the saving of the soul. There's something on the inside of the church of Jesus Christ which wants to arise and go again. It's the spirit of boldness. It's a spirit of confidence that only the Holy Spirit can bring as he fills our lives. There's a great example in um, John chapter 9. There's the healing of the blind man. And the Pharisees get all angry with this blind man, says, how dare you be healed, really, is what they say. And then they say, this man, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, they say, this man is a sinner. And the blind man or the man who had been blind said, listen, I don't know anything about Jesus Christ. I don't know if he's a sinner or not. Now, of course, we know Jesus was not a sinner, but just that's the parable, that's the example there in John chapter 9. He says, I don't know if Jesus was a sinner or not. All I know is this. I was blind and now I can see. Man, I can hear that confidence on the inside of him. He said, I don't need all the answers. I don't need to know everything that's gone on. I don't need to be able to explain it all. But what I have got a boldness about and what I have got a confidence in is this. I was blind and now I can see. Friend, every one of us has a story. You know, perhaps your story was I was blind and now I see. Perhaps your uh, story was I was depressed and now I'm full of joy. Perhaps your story was I was sick and now I'm healed. Perhaps your story was uh, I was an outcast and now I'm accepted. Perhaps your story was I was an addict and now I've been set free. Perhaps your story was I was full of insecurity and now I've got a boldness and a confidence. Friend, can I say, have a boldness to tell your story. The world needs to hear what God has done in our lives. That is the gospel in action. Here we are on a Sunday online and we, you know, um, all over the world, churches are online now and they're preaching the word of God and they're speaking from the Bible. But friend, there isn't anything more powerful than a life story. And each of us have got a life story. And I believe today God wants to put a fresh boldness on the inside of his church for us to tell our story. So often in the Bible, people went out and they told whole villages, whole towns about what Jesus did. Something happens on the inside when God works a wonder. And he has worked a wonder in our lives if we've said yes to Jesus Christ. You know, for me, I've been a Christian now for 35 years, but it still overwhelms me what God has done in my life. Friend, let's be bold. Let's allow the lion of the tribe of Judah to roar from within his church. Let's be bold people. Let's pray bold prayers. And let's show this world that our God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the saviour of the world and can turn lives inside out in Jesus' name. Friend, I want to ask you today, have you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? I just said for me, I, I received Jesus at the Fairfield Halls in Croydon, not, not far from here, October the 8th, 1984. I went into that hall and I didn't believe anything and I didn't have a heart for God and I wasn't interested in God or religion and I, and I hated the thought of church. But just a couple of hours after that, as I came out of that hall, I had encountered the love and the power of Jesus Christ and I was never the same again. Friend, have you encountered the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm not asking if you had a vision or had a feeling, but have you received him as your Lord and Savior? It's very easy to just pray a prayer, but it needs to be from the heart. It needs to be from right down deep on the inside where you really mean it. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and if you believe in your heart that he died on the cross, he's been raised from the dead, you shall be saved. That's, that's a scriptural expression. It's in the Bible to be saved. It means God comes into your life, gives you everlasting life. I don't have to hope, guess, pray whether I'm going to heaven or not or is there a God. I've entered into a relationship with him and I know that forever and ever, for eternity, 
I'm going to be with God, with my heavenly Father. And friend, I want to ask you today, have you got that assurance on the inside? Are you just hoping that it all ends up okay? Or do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Friend, I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer right now. And I'm going to ask you to be bold in that prayer, to actually pray it out loud, out of your mouth. The Bible says, if you say with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, something happens on the inside of your heart. And today I believe God's going to do a sign in your life. God's going to do something so powerful as you pray this prayer with me now, line by line, to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you demonstrated your love through sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross to give me life. I thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. I turn away from the way I've lived apart from you. I receive you as my Lord, as my Saviour, and as my friend. And by the help of your grace and your power, I will never be the same again. I thank you for eternal life. Amen. Friend, if you've prayed that prayer, then God has come into your life and he's now your heavenly father. There'll be other things to do. It'd be good to get a Bible and get involved with church somewhere. But friend, I want you to hear in just a couple of seconds time, there's going to be somebody give you some instructions about some next steps for your life. But I want to encourage you today. There's a spirit of boldness on the inside of your life now. God wants us to go through this life with a confidence and a boldness. And as we go into this week, I want to encourage each and every one of us to help make other people's lives great. God bless you and let's let the Lion of Judah roar this week in Jesus' name. If you just accepted Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Saviour, we are so excited for you. As a church, we're totally cheering you on. And what we'd love for you to do is to click the next steps link either in the chat or on the screen right now. Isn't that right, Ben? Yeah, that's right. Our amazing Connect team is on hand. We want to help you in your walk of faith today. We are, like Eleanor said, we are so excited. If that's you, if you prayed that prayer this morning, then we want to hear from you as well. Our Connect Lounge Live is opening now as well. If you're new to church, maybe you want to ask some questions about what this, what all this means and, and, and the experience that you've had today, then you can join us in the Connect Lounge Live that's open right now uh, click the zoom link that's in the chat and as well we want to remind you before you go that our prayer meeting is happening tonight insta live 8 p.m where pastor jay is going to be making some announcements about church coming back to some meetings so be online for that at eight o'clock we will see you there and we've got a youth team yep i'll happening. meet the team today and our youth team are honestly incredible. They, they are. put so much work in, so much love into our youth. And particularly if you if you don't know anything about Citygate Youth, you need to be there. You need to be there. Absolutely it's gonna you be, need to be there. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be great. There's gonna there's an amazing term that's lined up ahead of this next term for youth. So if you're a parent or a young person, get online for that right now. It's happening right, right now if you're watching live. So be online for that. And that's the end of our online service today. Wherever you are, we pray you have an amazing amazing week and we will see you next time. Goodbye.